It's a light duty day for the Expedition 37 crew as they begin unpacking the recently arrived Soyuz TMA-10M and getting the crew members who arrived on it up to speed on life in space. The full Expedition 37 crew now on board the station includes Russian Commander Fyodor Yurchikin, U.S. Flight Engineer Karen Nyberg, and European Space Agency Flight Engineer Luke Parmitano, all of whom have been at the station since May 28th, 121 days now in all. And then also three newly arrived crew members, U.S. Flight Engineer Mike Hopkins and Russian Flight Engineers Oleg Kotov and Sergei Rozansky. Hopkins, Kotov, and Rozansky launched aboard their Soyuz TMA-10M from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at 3.58 p.m. Central Time Wednesday, kicking off a six-month stay in space. Like the two previous Soyuz crews, they made the journey to the station in just about six hours, arriving at 9.45 p.m. Central Time that same night and opening hatches at 11.34 p.m. Since Wednesday uh, was such a long day for both halves of the crew, they had Thursday completely off with no items on their to-do list. And now today they're easing back into a regular routine with just that uh, light duty time scheduled. The light duty day today gives the crew another chance to rest up before they're called upon to work this weekend. The space station mission management team has been meeting on the subject of a second berthing attempt for Orbital Sciences Cygnus cargo vehicle on Sunday. That vehicle has completed several engine firings that would put it in place for that uh, possible uh, berthing, and NASA TV coverage would begin at 3.30 a.m. Central Time. You can keep an eye on NASA.gov for further updates on its status. It's been a very busy week for the crew on board the space station. With the postponement of the Cygnus berthing, they were able to squeeze in a good deal of extra science work. Flight engineers Karen Nyberg and Luca Parmitano both spent some time in on the InSpace 3 experiment, which examines colloidal fluids classified as smart materials. Those transfer into a solid-like state in the presence of a magnetic field, and the hope is that new manufacturing models based on the idea of having nanoparticles act as self-assembling building blocks could be used to improve or develop active mechanical systems such as new brake systems and airplane landing gear. Nyberg and Parmitano also took part in the reaction self-test experiment. That study is aimed at trying out a way for astronauts to objectively assess whether fatigue might affect their performance in space. Nyberg also worked on the Ice Crystals 2 experiment, which looks at the growth rates and stability of ice crystals in supercooled water. The results of that experiment could open up a new research field related to the fundamentals of crystal growth mechanisms controlled by biological macromolecules. And Parmitano performed some maintenance on the materials science laboratory, changing out experiments being run from the ground. The materials uh, science laboratory can be used for basic materials research on metals, alloys, polymers, semiconductors, ceramics, crystals, and glasses. You can help scientists discover new applications for existing materials or help lead to new or improved materials. That's what's been going on in space this week, and this is Mission Control Houston.